Hello, this is Dr. Stephanie Munoz. I am the Director of Clinical and Academic Research at the Maryland University of Integrative Health. And in this presentation, I provide some guidance for the abstract creation and submission of a case report abstract for the MUIH Research Symposium. If you haven't already, please go back and view the short video that provides general instructions for all abstract submissions. This presentation is specific to abstract submissions for case reports. Um, a case report is um, a, a mixed methods report that often has both qualitative and quantitative data associated with it, and it's an observational study. So this is not an intervention that has been done for a particular client or group of clients. It's an observation of something that has already happened or that naturally is occurring in the process of clinical practice. So you might write up a case where something unique happened or there's some information that might be particularly noteworthy. It's important that you consider what the story of the case is. Not everyone that sees improvement in their symptoms is worthy of a case report. Is there already robust literature about a particular relationship? So for example, if you work on a dietary intervention with a diabetic and a reduction in sugar improves their, uh, their fasting glucose, that would not necessarily be worthy of a case report because there's already a lot of robust evidence about that relationship. So you want to think about what this case contributes to the literature that might suggest a new direction of inquiry or, or a relationship that hasn't previously been considered in depth. You're gonna start with a title that should be about 10 to 12 words, and that should include the key components of the case. So it might explain why the particular patient or group sought care, what assessment was done, and or what treatment existed. So it should focus on what was done and who it was done with, rather than the results or the findings or the outcomes that'll be reported in the body of the abstract itself. It should be clear that this is a case report and, or, or a case series, a case study, and you want to make sure to follow convention regarding capitalization. There's an example at the bottom of the slide here showing that. And next comes the author information. So whether you have one or many authors, the, uh, the, the form that you're going to use for submission has a place to enter the author's name and their affiliation, their department and also to ascribe the order of authorship. So it should be in order of involvement. The first author is always the author who spearheads the project and takes the lead in making it happen. And then it follows in kind uh, level of involvement or engagement or effort on the project. The only exception to that is that sometimes there is a senior researcher who serves as a mentor or a guide through the process and they often take the position of last author. If you have any questions about authorship, please feel free to, to contact me with those questions. You'll see here at the, in the example at the bottom, um, while there's only one author here and therefore the superscript and, and number are not necessary, if you had several author, authors with different affiliations, you would see the list of authors with a superscript for each of their affiliations and then the affiliations ascribed to them below. Next comes your background, where you're going to talk about the, um, the context for the case. So that might be, for example, a little bit of epidemiology around the problem, condition, or set of symptoms that the client or patient presents with, um, maybe a little bit of background on the treatment or intervention that was utilized. The, the bottom line is that the background has to explain why this matters, why this case is relevant or unique, um, oftentimes because of the relationships that it's demonstrating. There's an example below to show you what a background might look like. And then follows the case description. And for a case report, this is going to be the most robust section. And in this case, you're going to explain the client and who they were, uh, why they came to treatment, 
Um, and what you saw as a clinician or what the clinician saw in terms of the clinical assessment, what the treatment plan was and what the outcomes were. So you want to make sure because you're going to have most likely a whole lot of information about this particular individual that it's only information that's directly related to the message of this report. So it's not necessary to include every detail about this individual or even every symptom that changed, you want to think about what is it that this case report is communicating and therefore what information needs to be in the case description. And then you have the conclusion. And then the conclusion is your opportunity to reflect on the case. The case um, description is going to have more about what happened, what was done, what the, the consequences of that were. And the conclusion, you talk about what is the lesson here? What is it that we're going to take away? So you might, um, you might talk about what future studies could be done based on whatever might be suggested in this case, um, what clinicians might want to explore in their own patient population, it's really important that you don't suggest causality, that you don't say, you know, because of the single case, we know that this treatment results in this outcome. This is just one person, or maybe it's a few people, but in any case, you want to be really conservative in the claims that you're making about what kind of evidence this is. This no single case is proof of a broader relationship. So you want to make sure that your conclusion is therefore stated appropriately. And you'll see um, in the example below, it suggests that those two cases provide encouraging findings that this condition may be treated with these modalities, not suggesting that this particular approach necessarily results in a certain effect. If you have any questions as you're developing your case report, please go to your academic leadership and find out what kind of support is available in your department, um, perhaps with more experienced researchers in your department or faculty. You want to make sure that if you're coming to the abstract writing workshop, which I highly encourage you to do, that you're bringing a draft of an abstract with you so that you have a place to start from and the support staff there are able to give you feedback and help you edit and shape the abstract that already exists. If you have questions about the submission process itself, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thanks so much and I look forward to seeing your submission.